The year is 2005. The college football scene was taken by storm by the running back of USC, Reggie Bush. But due to some things that happened off the field, it was taken away. And to a lot of people, that was a huge mistake. So we're going to drop Reggie Bush in today's college football with the 2023 USC Trojans. And we're going to see how well Reggie Bush is insanely quick, fast, elusive, shifty play style can hold up against defenses in today's college football. Try to make him as realistic, but fair as possible. But in all honesty, how fair was Reggie Bush as a player back then? So let me know down below in the comments. Did I do a good job balancing out his attributes or is this just way too crazy? Or did I not do good enough? Their first game of the season and they're ranked number 14 in the country. And that shifty and elusiveness we talked about earlier or Reggie's putting that on full display the first play. Going back to look at some of the film from that 2005 season, I talk about his speed and elusiveness a lot before back in that era, Reggie was pretty tough for his size. And don't get me wrong, he wasn't a small back, standing at 5'11", 205 pounds, but this was an era where the big backs were really the thing, a power back, a guy who can hit the holes and explode. And he had a great college career and a pretty decent NFL career, but if he would've came into the league just five or six years later in his prime, I think he would've been even better than what he was then. I mean, think about it. That 2010s era of running backs came in and they went crazy, completely changed the dynamic of the game. They weren't known for their power, strictly speed and elusiveness. Chris Johnson, Shady McCoy, Jamal Charles, just a few names that really rung bells around that time. But of course, as time went on, the position evolved a little bit more, went from just straight power backs to speed, elusive guys, to guys who can do it all, like the Zeke Elliott, the Le'Veon Bells, the Ty Gurley's. I mean, there's so many you can go with. But today, Hawaii stood no chance against Reggie Bush and his USC offense. They have an insane lead by the end of the third. But that huge lead would be extended. Early in the fourth, Reggie would swing out of the backfield, make a nice catch wide open for another touchdown. Reggie would walk out of this blowout win being named player of the game with six total touchdowns on the day. This man is a wizard, pretty much dead to rights by three Washington State defenders, put the brakes on, accelerated out of that, and damn near walked it in for a touchdown. Of course, after the big play, putting them in good field positioning, great blocking by the offensive line, and a solid run equals a touchdown for the Trojans. I'm starting to think dropping this man in today's game just isn't fair. He's putting moves on these DBs, not losing momentum, continuing to move forward at full speed is crazy. And remember that toughness I talk about. Stiff arms a man, continues to move forward, finds the open space, a great 30-yard run. He could have probably took to the crib. And so far, this Trojan offensive line has been going crazy, blocking their tail off. The less work Reggie got to put in, the better. But with this being their first home game against a team like Washington State, this game isn't nowhere near the blowout everyone thought it would be. And with a great run here midway through the fourth, Reggie will fall just one yard short of a touchdown. Change direction, turn back the other way of the field, go upfield, and to walk this one in for a touchdown is absolutely mind-blowing. A 2-0 start for the Trojans. I know it's kind of early, but do you think a team like this, the 2023 Trojans with the addition of Prime Reggie Bush, can they go undefeated? One of these teams, either USC or Boston College, will walk out of here with their first L on the season, and we shall see who that team will be. I absolutely adore the plays where Reggie just outruns everybody, jukes defenders, does all of that. It's amazing. But the plays like this where he outmuscles guys, completely manhandles defenders, I love these even more. It's only the third game of the season, but the first game of their season where they're actually falling behind going into the second half, it's nothing to worry about just yet. But like I said, just yet. It's a tie game late in the third quarter. USC is in desperate need of a huge play. And of course, when they need that, they're going to call on their OG. And he's going to work his magic and take this win 81 yards to the Baja. But now here in the fourth quarter, yet again, a tie game. I don't know what it is about this Boston College defense, but they're doing a great job keeping USC out of the end zone, which is kind of surprising. And Reggie's having a pretty decent day. I mean, he's had a few explosive plays, but not play after play like we've seen the first couple of games. It's been pretty much bits and chunks for him in the run game today. And by the end of the fourth quarter, it would be a tie game. And coming here until overtime, the Trojans would be knocking at the door on third and goal in desperate need of a touchdown. And Reggie's going to lock in and get that for them. The Trojans D went and got a stop, a much needed win at that. And now it's up to Reggie and his offense to lock in, get into the end zone and take this game away. And if this man could take one home for 81 yards, you better bet your diddly daddly do that he can walk one in anywhere between 10 yards or closer and get a touchdown. And that's exactly what he does to take this win. Hey, a win is a win. A very close and shaky win here at the crib. But nonetheless, they secure the dub. 
The Trojans jumped four spots in the rankings from number 14 to number 10. If they continue to dominate in no time, they could possibly be ranked number one. A scoreless first quarter and was shaping up to be a scoreless first half as they continue to get into conference play. These defenses and these teams in general are starting to step up and play a lot harder. But honestly, knocking at the front door of the end zone, I never thought for a second they would go an entire half scoreless. And of course, Reggie had other plans as he walks in for a touchdown. But this defense just seems to have the Trojans number seven points throughout an entire first half is absolutely insane. And don't get me wrong, the Trojans defense is having a great game as well, holding Arizona State to nothing here in the third quarter. They pick up their second touchdown, but man, this is a tough game. And here, late in the fourth quarter, with that 14-point lead, Bush will pull off another decent run to cap off the day, and they'll walk out of here with the dub. A very uneventful day for both teams, but damn near 40 carries, only 58 yards on the ground, 57 through the air, but that defense played no games with this offense. Another Pac-12 matchup and yet another scoreless first quarter for the number four ranked Trojans, but the way Reggie gets this second quarter kicked off, it ain't going to be scoreless for long. And it seems like a lot of these teams, especially in the Pac-12, are starting to key in on that run game a lot more, even though they have guys on the perimeter like a Jordan Addison and a Mario Williams. And then as a defense, you have to worry about Caleb Williams as a runner himself. That's why I feel like the read option works so well for them, especially in the red zone. Another tie game midway through the third. Oh, but it wouldn't be like that for long. One guy standing between Reggie and the open field. He completely little boys this man, takes off, and the speed does the rest. Up one score here in the fourth quarter, but USC cannot let off the gas. This 2-2 two and two Arizona team is putting up a fight, and they're putting up points. But who, in my opinion, is right now considered the number one running back in the country, Reggie Bush, would get great blocking up front and go untouched to further their lead. One minute left in this game. It's pretty much over. They can kneel this one away or just kick a field goal. Reggie's going to stay on the field, pull off another crazy run, diving into the end zone, completely putting this game away. And after a dominating performance at home, we take a look at the Heisman watch and Reggie is ranked number one right now in the race. And we're looking to see if he can finish the season exactly like this and win back that Heisman trophy. NCAA Players of the Week for Week 7, Reggie Bush with nearly 300 yards on the ground and four total touchdowns. And his fellow teammate, Corey Foreman, named Defensive Player of the Week with a big-time performance. How do you get a game started against a great Notre Dame team at their crib with a 68-yard touchdown run pretty much untouched, straight up pooping on the defense? I'm telling you, ever since that game against Arizona State where he put up only 58 yards on the ground, this man, Reggie Bush, has been on a mission to put up video game-like numbers on a game-to-game -game basis, and he's just going crazy. I'm loving it. And that streak that they've had of scoreless first quarters has finally come to an end, but that may be due to Caleb Williams being benched and the backup taking over the team. And now checking back into the game with a 31-6 lead over Notre Dame here late in the third quarter, Caleb Williams is back in the game, which is weird because he's pretty much the starter. And right here on first and 10, down here in the red zone, we get a flash of that insane athleticism and leaping ability that we all know and love from Reggie Bush's best plays in college and in the NFL, getting hit below but comes down in the end zone. I don't know what it is, but when he gets a handoff when they're lined up in the gun and the offense completely crashes to one side, he puts on the brakes, reverse field, and makes something out of nothing. This man is an absolute living highlight reel. Trojan players and fans are going crazy after they get a huge win in one of their most important games of the season, absolutely spanking Notre Dame in a huge blowout win. Over 400 total yards on the day, five touchdowns, and Caleb Williams get to hold up that trophy that resembles a turd. Man, USC feels on top of the world right now. Easily one of their toughest matchups of the season. Number eight ranked 6-1 Utah, at least they're at home in this Pac-12 matchup. Now with an early 7-0 lead, but that don't matter. They got to continue to apply pressure. And that boy Bush is all gas, no brakes, pulling off one of his nastiest runs of the season, diving into the end zone for a crazy touchdown. You put this man in open space with one defender to have to make the play to stop him, he going to embarrass that man every single time. If he didn't get tripped up, I'm pretty sure this would have been a house call, but a big play nonetheless. Now, I always talk about how he puts defenders on skates. He can make a move. He can do this. He can do that. But when the offensive line and the receivers are blocking this great, the only thing he got to do is take this one to the crib. Now, we haven't seen him get involved in the past game little to none this season, like really none at all. But he's going to extend their 21-0 lead to 28-0 with a smooth eight-yard catch in the end zone for a touchdown. And hold on, a hey, right back at it in the passing game with blockers ahead and open space. The only thing that kept this man from taking this one to the Baheezy is the sideline. 
and you want to talk about going to the Baheezy and putting the game away full speed towards the sideline, put on the brakes, uh-uh, get back up field for a 75-yard run. Tell them boys good night. Another win in conference play, they remained undefeated. Caleb Williams earns his starting role back, and Reggie put up a dominating performance. Yeah, life is great for the USC Trojans right now. Now, officially ranked the number one team in the country, the Trojans continue with conference play, but they now have the biggest target on their back than any other team in college football. First and 10, a terrible, horrible pass from Caleb Williams, but a beautiful, miraculous catch from Reggie. Then he puts it all on the line and secure the first down. This man is just magical. And you know, once they get into the red zone, they're going to put it in his hands and Reggie going to dance, getting into the end zone yet again, diving, coming down hard for the tub. I'm curious, have you ever seen a player that navigates their way through traffic the way that this man does? He goes untouched 70 plus yards to the crib. I'm curious to think how many 50 plus yard touchdowns downs will he have by the end of the season and it's crazy every time he goes untouched and pulls off a big run he comes right back and answers with a play like this finding his way back into the hole making guys look crazy manhandling defenders he is nasty this block from this fullback to set the edge is absolutely absurd somehow reggie avoids the contact goes untouched into the end zone yet again for a nice 26 yard tubby wubby We've seen Reggie this entire first half completely tear up the outside on these runs, but now we get to watch him pound these holes. One guy stood a chance, but once he seen green, he knew it was over, going into the end zone for yet another tub. And with the first half coming to an end being an absolute massacre, man, it continues. This man reverse field, got into the end zone somehow. I don't know how he does it, but it should be illegal to tear up a defense like this. I'm completely sick to my stomach. This man has limited space, caught this ball, and somehow almost beat an angle that four players had on him. Bro, his speed is next level. 308 on the day, six rushing touchdowns, 83 yards through the air. Name a player that can put on a performance this dynamic, this versatile, this dominant. The first play from scrimmage, cutting inside the lane, cutting back out, turning on the afterburner, saying bye-bye to this cow defender. This man is crazy. I knew this first quarter was destined to be great. Danny's all white unis. He got them all white long sleeves on. He just finna go crazy, but somehow he falls one yard short of a touchdown. I don't know what the ref's looking at, but he literally fell and rolled right in. And of course, these one-yard runs are bittersweet due to plays like the one previous where it could have been a big touchdown run that fell just short. The Trojans have just gotten past that halfway point of the season. They're still undefeated, ranked number one in the nation. Reggie's been going crazy, putting up insane numbers. He already has over 100 yards rushing just here in the first quarter. And obviously, being at that number one or number two spot in the country, they're a shoe-in for the national championship. But it's going to be interesting to see how things play out the remainder of the season. Now, at the start of the season, it was a little bit shaky. They were showing signs of inconsistency, and I was getting a little bit worried, especially with those overtime games and just a lot of close games where there really was supposed to be blowouts. Reggie and the Trojan offense have been hanging up 30, 40-plus points on just about every team they play for about three to four weeks straight. They've been going crazy. And just like that, they secure another big-time Pac-12 matchup game on the road against Cal. Another big time performance from Mr. Bush. He did really most of his damage in the first half, the first quarter alone, which is crazy. He kind of took it easy the second half. But taking it easy is not going to win him that Heisman. The top five players in the race currently are all halfbacks, which is weird. There's no quarterback to be found on this list. Is this how this man is going to start every single game? First play from scrimmage, walked it down to the crib, cutting his way up through traffic, going up the sideline for a touchdown to take an early 7-0 lead. And damn, it just dawned on me. Every single game they've played this season so far has pretty much been a conference game. The Pac-12 is insanely deep. Even if they were to lose every game the remainder of the season, they'd still make it into the conference championship. I don't know what it is about this guy, but in the first quarter, he just channels his inner beast, making plays like no other, taking this one for another 80-plus yard touchdown. Count them up. I said something earlier about keeping tabs on how many 50-plus yard touchdowns this man would have by the end of the season, and you could just add this one to the total 60-plus yards. This man is just crazy. There's not a doubt in my mind that this man is going to secure another Heisman Trophy, but here, avoiding his route, going straight up the middle of the field, picking up a nearly 50-yard reception, absolutely insane. And with this smooth 10-yard pickup, Reggie Bush will become the new USC school record holder for the most rushing yards in a single season, dating all the way back to 1981. Four, one, two, 
three, four, four defenders. That's how many people stood a chance to keep this man out of the end zone and securing yet another 50 plus yard touchdown. And since the OG is out here breaking records, how about this one? A new NCAA record for the most rushing touchdowns in a single season set at 38 by that boy Reggie Bush. On only 16 carries, probably the most yards he's had in a single game thus far this season, over 300 plus with four touchdowns on the ground. 10 and 0, just a few games away from completing that undefeated season. And soon we'll be finding out if Reggie secures that Heisman Trophy that he worked so hard for this season. Now, this is just beautiful. Well, for Reggie at least, swerving his way through traffic, going untouched, running straight directly down the middle of the field, looking that Colorado fan base directly in their eyes as he walks into the end zone for a tub. Here on first and 10, I'm surprised this man is still alive after this play. Tried to go over the top of the defender, came down, and damn near snapped his neck and his clavicle all on the same play. If you can find me a play in the history of the sport of football where a hole is this huge and wide open, I'll give you the draws off my ass. Another handoff in the red zone, you can go ahead and tally that one up. Another touchdown for that boy wearing number five. I don't know if it's because they're at home or whatever the case may be, but the Trojans are only up 11 points in the third quarter. They should be completely smashing these dudes right now. But I'd be lying if I said I had any doubts that they would blow the buffs out the water, and this touchdown here in the red zone pretty much secures that. Another top 10 opponent in the state of California at 10-1 UCLA, but that don't matter to that boy Reggie Bush. He gonna take this one all the way back to the crib. First play from scrimmage, 75 yards. We've all established Reggie has elite game-breaking speed, and for some reason, with a straight path to the end zone, he decided to try to fake out or juke or finesse his way around this defender when he could have just ran straight past him. He hasn't been much of a pass catcher out of the backfield this season. I think the most he's had in a single game was 83, which is pretty decent, but this play could have went to the crib for a big one. And I think if there's a stat out there, which it probably is for the most success in the first quarter, just the most points, yards, just the best team that performs in the first quarter, this USC team is definitely number one without a doubt. We've seen him juke, outrun, finesse, even stiff arm a few guys, but to absolutely truck this defender, put him on his back and dive into the end zone for a touchdown, nasty work. Probably the most unexpected blowout of the season, even though they've been on the roll against a 10-1 team in conference play and this UCLA team has been balling all season, this is pretty incredible. And with this win, they secure the undefeated regular season. And of course, Reggie is named player of the game, putting up 275 on the ground, some slight. Here in the Pac-12 championship game, the Trojans find themselves down a score against Washington here at the crib, but that was soon changed with a huge touchdown run from Reggie. One performance away from a national championship game, and we'll find out of Reggie's numbers and the work he's put in this season. Is it enough to win him another Heisman Trophy? Tie game here towards the end of the first, but with a little bit of blocking, elite speed around the edge, and a tiny pinch of toughness towards the end of this run, they will walk into the second quarter with the lead. But shortly after taking the lead, the Huskies answer back, and it's now a tie game early in the third. I'm really excited to see how this one will turn out. He's had a lot of great runs this season, but to put a move, spin on this guy, get to the outside, and muscle, and just straight up manhandle two defenders, oh baby. The handoffs in the red zone are always a gimme, but a pitch in the red zone with nobody on the outside, huh? bye bye baby. The last few games we've seen Bush get involved in the passing game just a little bit more, and right here he couldn't do much after the catch, especially being surrounded by three defenders. Not much. And with a seven point lead here early in the fourth, that would turn into a 14 point lead by ways of the passing game. That's crazy. Of course, player of the game, Reggie Bush, an outstanding performance, but God, 35 carries. That boy took on a load this game. Pac 12 champions going completely undefeated, heading into the biggest game in the college football world. Pretty outstanding, if I do say so myself. Taking a look at his numbers for the season, there's not a running back, quarterback, not a player of any position in the entire country who can compete with these numbers. This man is for sure the Heisman Trophy winner, without a doubt. Blake Corum with 1,800 rushing yards on the season. A fraction of the touchdowns wins the Heisman Trophy over this man. GG.